A very good evening from DTRT Lucknow to all the participants of this webinar. Friends, in this session, we are going to study part two of ledgers. And we are starting with illustration three of the document that we were studying in the morning. So as you are aware that the entries are first made in the journal and in the journal when the entry is made of any transaction or any event, basically what we are recording out there is that one account would be debited and, and another account would be credited. So a double entry is made accordingly. One entry would constitute a debit in one account and the other entry would constitute a credit in another account. Now thereafter this journal entry is ledgerized, so to say. That is, we take this entry, we take both the entries rather, the debit entry and the credit entry to the respective account in the ledger. And when we take that entry into the ledger, if there was a debit required, we make the entry on the debit side of the concerned account. And while we make the entry on the debit side, the reference that we give is of the account which is to be credited. Similarly, if an account has to be credited, then we make the entry on the right side of that account, that is the credit side of that account, and we make a reference to the account which is to be debited. So here in this illustration three, the data is given by Mr. S who is the owner. And uh, Mr. S is requesting us to compile only two things, the two personal accounts of Mr. H and Mr. R in his ledger. So Mr. H and Mr. R are the trading partners and therefore their personal accounts are maintained by Mr. S in his books of accounts. So in his ledger, these accounts would be maintained and in the books of S, there will be one personal account of Mr. H and another personal account of Mr. R. And for the month of April 2015, we are being asked to prepare the two personal accounts of Mr. H and Mr. R in the ledger of Mr. S. So what are the entries we can see on the 1st of April? These numbers on the left hand side are the dates. So on the 1st of April, Mr. S owes Mr. R 15,000 rupees. So as we read the entries, we'll go on seeing how these two accounts are getting affected in the books of S. So when we say that Mr. S owes Mr. R 15,000 rupees, this entry will have to be made in Mr. R's account. So here, we are making a balance brought down entry of 15,000 rupees Mind you, these are the books of S and R's account is being made in the books of S. So when we say that Mr. S owes Mr. R 15,000 rupees, it means that Mr. S has to pay Mr. R 15,000 rupees. So obviously, Mr. R's account would, would receive a opening credit balance. So Mr. R's account would receive an opening credit balance of 15,000 rupees. And then that is what has been done out here. A balance brought down of 15,000 rupees is shown here in R's account. Now, 
The second part is that Mr. H owes Mr. S 20,000 rupees, which means that Mr. H has to pay Mr. S 20,000 rupees. So in the books of S, Mr. H would have to be, would, uh, would, uh, would receive an opening debit balance. So Mr. H's account would be debited by a brought down entry on the debit balance side. And let's see how this is done here. So here we can see the balance brought down entry on the debit side. What we are saying is that Mr. H's account is being debited here. With the balance brought down entry, this balance is being brought from the earlier year. And uh, it is showing here that Mr. H has got a debit balance, which means that Mr. H is supposed to pay 20,000 rupees to Mr. S. Now, Mr. R on 14th of, on 4th of April, Mr. R sold goods worth 60,000 at 60, at 10% trade discount to Mr. S. So Mr. S is the purchase area. And these goods are sold for 60,000 rupees and 10% trade discount is given. So in Mr. R's account, this is Mr. R's account and we are say, showing here <clears throat> a purchase of 54,000 rupees because Mr. R's account is getting uh, credited because he has sold certain item to Mr. S. And Mr. S has credited Mr. R's account and uh, debited his purchase account. As we can see from this reference over here. <clears throat> This reference by purchase account means that purchase account will be debited and R's account is being credited by 54,000. Why 54,000? Because a 10% discount has been entered here. Now here, <coughs> The goods were worth 60,000 rupees, but he got them for 54,000 rupees. 10% is 6,000, so we reduce 6,000 from 60,000, we get 54,000. So Mr. R has sold goods to Mr. S, Mr. S has purchased them. So Mr. S has debited his purchase account and credited Mr. R. Why he has credited Mr. R? Because he will pay to Mr. R this 54,000 rupees. It is not a cash sale. It is a credit sale. <clears throat> then on 5th of April, Mr. S sold to Mr. H goods prices at priced at 30,000 rupees. So S is selling to H. So in H is purchasing. So we can say that uh, in H's account, it is a purchase. And therefore, S's account is being debited and uh, sales account in the books of S is being credited. Now this is uh, showing that sale is worth 30,000 rupees. So 30,000 worth rupees of sale is shown here. This sale is made by S to H and therefore the sales account in the books of S is being credited and uh, H, H's account is being debited here because H has purchased this item and he has not made the payment for it. <clears throat> if the payment would be made, it would be written, written in the question that it is a cash purchase or cash sale. Now, 17th of uh, April, 
A purchase of 25,000 net has been made from R, which were sold to H at a profit of 15,000 rupees. So purchase is made from R of 25,000 rupees. So first of all, we have to make a entry in R's account. And we can see this entry over here. 25,000 worth of purchase is made on 17th of April. This purchase is made by S from R. <coughs> so purchase account is debited by 25,000 in the books of S. And in the books of S, R's account is being credited here for 25,000 rupees. Now, these goods which were purchased from R were sold to H. So our sale has to be also recorded, which is made to H. <coughs> so, at a profit of 15,000, which means that uh, it was purchased for 25,000 and it was sold for 40,000 rupees because a profit of 15,000 has to be recorded here. So a sale of 40,000 has to be basically recorded. As you can see here, the sale of 40,000 rupees is being recorded for 17th of April. Sale account in the books of S is being credited and Mr. H's account in the books of S is being debited accordingly. Now let's go to the next one. Mr. S has rejected 10% of Mr. R's goods of 4th April. Now Mr. R had uh, sold goods worth 60,000 here and uh, he had sold them for a 10% trade discount. But Mr. S has rejected 10% of Mr. R's goods. So the amount which was paid here was 54,000 rupees or rather the amount which was promised to have been paid was 54,000 rupees. And out of the 54,000 rupees, 10% goods are rejected. <clears throat> so this is a rejection being made by Mr. S. So this is a purchase return from Mr. S of 10% of the goods. So when when the sale amount is 60 54000 uh, 5400 would be the purchase return at 10% of mr r's goods of 4th april so let us see this uh, entry also where rejection is being made of r's goods by s so we'll go into the r's account and uh, here we are seeing that this is a purchase return entry. Purchase return entry is being made here. <coughs> so therefore, R's account is being debited by 5400 and the purchase return account is being credited with 5400 rupees. And the date is 18th April. Then on 19th of April, Mr. S has issued a cash memo for rupees 10,000 to Mr. H. Mr. S has issued a cash memo for 10,000 to Mr. H, who came personally for this consignment of goods, urgently needed by him. Now, Mr. S has issued a cash memo of 10,000 to Mr. H who came personally, which means that Mr. H came and purchased goods from Mr. S. So it is a sale for Mr. S and it is a cash sale because a cash memo is being issued here. So Mr. S has sold to Mr. H and uh, therefore Mr. S, as you can see here, On 18th of, uh, on 19th of April, uh, 
a cash memo is being issued it means that uh, you can say that no sale is being made here and only a cash memo is being issued for 10000 rupees to mr h because this is a consignment but even when a consignment is taken at that time no sale is supposed to be recorded because when we will understand when we will study consignment account uh, we will know that whenever a consignment is given to anyone anyone at that time sale is not recorded <clears throat> so out here a cash memo is issued of 10000 rupees to mr h who came personally for this consignment of goods which was urgently needed by him so it is since it, he has taken away a consignment therefore no sale is being recorded here when a consignment is ultimately sold at that time the sale will be recorded in the manner as in the manner as uh, required in case of maintenance of the consignment account now on 20th 22nd of uh, april mr h cleared half his total dues to mr s and enjoying a half percent cash discount of the of the payment received rupees 20000 was by check here what is happening is mr h is having certain dues and out of those dues half of that dues he is paying off to mr s and uh, when he is paying off these dues he is enjoying a half percent cash discount out of uh, and out of the payment that is being received by mr s 20000 is received by check and the rest amount is received in cash so here we have to understand first of all that uh, what were the dues at that that point of time and uh, when he paid those dues he enjoyed a half percent cash discount on the payment so we'll have to make an entry of for discount also here and uh, half percent cash discount would have to be entered here in respect of clearing half of the total dues because there was a deal between h and s and uh, s told h that if you can if you will pay half the total dues i will give you half percent cash discount on the on, on that payment so here we will see the hs account on 22nd and uh, he has paid 20000 rupees and 20000 rupees paid by check and 24000 rupees 24775 which is the remaining amount is paid by cash and a discount of half percent which is 225 rupees is allowed here to understand the calculations at this stage what we have to see is that before 22nd of april what was the actual balance so here you can see the calculation is given that on 22nd april mr h owes mr s 90000 rupees now this 90000 can be seen here because on 1st of april there was a balance brought down 20000 then 5th april there was a sale made to h and then on 17th april a 40000 sale was made to h so total amount pending for payment was 90000 rupees now out of this 90000 rupees he was supposed to pay half which is 45000 rupees so out of the 45000 rupees he got half percent discount so half percent of 45000 is 225 rupees and uh, he paid the remaining amount like after getting this discount of 225 rupees he paid 44775 rupees and out of the 44775 rupees he paid 20000 rupees by check and the rest of the amount which is 24775 he paid by way of cash so you can see this uh, payment being made here and half percent discount 
being received by Mr. H. So here, when the payment is made by check, the bank account is the bank account of S is debited because the payment is going into the bank, and uh, H's account is credited for twenty thousand rupees. When cash payment is made, cash account is is uh, debited, and H's account is credited here for twenty four thousand seven seventy five. In respect of the discount allowed, the H's account is credited for two twenty five, and uh, discount allowed account is debited for two twenty five. So this discount allowed will go into the profit loss account later on. <clears throat> and if it is a trade discount, it can also go into the. It will go into the trading account definitely. So here, that's how this entry is being made here. Let's go to the next one. Now, R's total dues less ten thousand held back were cleared by check. Whatever R was supposed to pay, except ten thousand rupees which he held back. He cleared those dues by check, enjoying a cash discount of one thousand rupees on the payment. So again, if you see the calculation of uh, of uh, twenty nine of twenty sixth of May, or oh, sorry, twenty sixth of April. Here you can see R's total dues. He held back only ten thousand rupees. So R has cleared his total dues. He has received his discount of one thousand rupees, and uh, R's total dues were cleared. So who cleared these dues? S has cleared the dues. S has made the payment to R, and S has received discount. So this discount received is the discount received by S. Because he has made a payment except ten thousand rupees, so only ten thousand rupees is shown as remaining here, and the rest of the amount is shown as paid. Here you can see that Mr. R's account is being debited because the payment is being made by check of seventy-seven thousand six hundred rupees, which is the remaining amount, which is paid. Now, how this remaining amount is coming? Because we have written ten thousand as the balance amount, and whatever is remaining for both sides to be equal, it is entered here as seventy seven thousand six hundred rupees. So the entire balance is cleared up, and by making a check payment, and the check payment amount is uh, debited to Mr. R's account and uh, credited to bank. Because payment is made from the bank by check. Then we make an entry on 29th of April, where we close H's account to record the fact that all but 5,000 was cleared by him by a check because he was declared bankrupt. So here we are going to make a bad debt entry because H is declared as bankrupt. So He could not pay this five thousand rupees, so five thousand rupees is a bad debt, and we are writing that bad debt here in H's account. By this, we are what we are doing is that we are accepting a a bad debt, and therefore H's account is being credited by the bad debt, and bad debt account of S is being debited accordingly for five thousand rupees, and. Apart from this five thousand rupees, he has made the remaining payment. So this remaining amount of forty thousand rupees is uh, being calculated on the basis of whatever is remaining to be paid out of both sides by subtracting the totals of both sides, and therefore this forty thousand amount is is cleared off by H over here. And after that, he is bankrupt, so he could not pay this five thousand rupees. And thereafter, on 30th of April, we have to balance our account, and therefore, both sides are 
seen as being balanced and therefore we are ultimately uh, making a balance brought down entry of 10,000 rupees because this is a balance carried down on 34th, 30th of April. It is a the credit side is more than the debit side is the credit balance and credit balance is entered on the debit side as balance carried down and therefore it is going to be carried forward to the next month in the first on first of next month as balance brought down 10,000 rupees. So that's how uh, we have tried to understand through an example as to how entries are being made in the ledger. Now, while, I'm, while studying this ledger, we have not uh, made separate entries into the ledger journal first and brought them into the ledger. That is uh, quite understood. And uh, that first we make the entry in the journal and then we ledgerize them. Now, the process of uh, transferring the journal entries in the accounts which are opened in the ledger, this process is called posting because what we are doing, we are transferring the journal entries into the ledger. This process of transferring the journal entries to the ledger, to the ledger account, is called posting the entries, the journal entries into the ledger account. Now, it must be remembered that ledger is known as the principal book of account. So if the question is asked that what is the principal book of account, ledger is the principal book of account. And the ledger provides full information regarding all transactions pertaining to any individual account. All the individual accounts are there in the ledger. They can be scrutinized at any point of time to get full information about the about the transactions. Now the difference between the totals on the debit side and the credit side is the balance of that account. And if the credit side is more than the debit side, it's called the credit balance. If the debit side is more than the credit side, it's called the debit. If the debit side is more, it's called the debit balance. Now whatever is the debit balance is written on the credit side as uh, balance carried down. And then it is brought forward to the next period by making a brought forward entry. And if it is a debit balance, it is brought forward to the debit side. And by making a debit entry. And if it is a credit balance, it is brought forward by making a credit entry, credit brought forward entry. And uh, some of the balances of uh, the accounts in the ledger are transferred to the profit and loss account and uh, some of them are carried forward to the next year. That is, they are shown in the balance sheet uh, depending upon the nature of the account. Now, a few questions that need our attention and therefore we can just browse through them. Number one, the process of transferring the debit and credit items from a journal to their respective accounts in the ledger is termed as what? So it is termed as posting. The technique of finding the net balance of an account after considering the totals of both debits and credits appearing in the account. When we are trying to find a net balance of an account by considering totals of both the sites, the debit side and the credit side, this technique of finding the net balance is called balancing of an account. Now, journal and ledger record transactions in which way? So journals and ledger, they record transactions in a chronological order and analytical order respectively, or they record the transactions in the analytical order and chronological order respectively. That is to say, first they record in the analytical order, then they record the chronological order, or they record it in the chronological order only. So, journal and ledger will record transactions in the chronological order only. The next question is ledger book is properly known as what? 
So ledger book is probably known as the principal book of accounts. Now, the next question is fifth question. At the end of the accounting year, all the nominal accounts of the ledger book. Now, what happens to the nominal accounts? They are balanced but not transferred to provident loss account. They are not balanced and also the balance is not transferred to the provident loss account. They are not balanced and their balance is transferred to the provident loss account. The third is correct. The nominal accounts are not balanced and their balances is transferred to the profit and loss account. So you'll find all the nominal account going to the profit and loss account. And uh, that's how we calculate the profit in the profit and loss account. And finally, whatever profit is calculated, it is taken to the capital account. So with those words, uh, we have completed this particular section uh, session on ledger. It was a small session, but uh, nevertheless, uh, there was no hurry. And I hope that we have completed this ledger part in a proper way. Uh, in, the, in the mock test also, we'll be asking lots of questions on ledger. So please revise them. We have done general entries as well as ledger. And uh, therefore, we are moving towards trial balance. And we'll be starting that in the morning session at uh, 8.30 tomorrow morning. But tomorrow's session is being shifted to 8.30. So please join us at 8.30 a.m. tomorrow morning for the session on trial balance. So thank you very much for having joined us this session. And uh, the video of the sessions are being made available. Please try to use them for doing a revision.